Come on, Arthur, get busy. come in on the train? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know? Why don't you know? The train was half hour late. I couldn't stand around waiting all day. Why do you expect he'll get here? Walk, I reckon. That's his business. Mine's trying to make a living. But he'll never find a place. A little boy like him. <laughs> That's some more of his business and the folks that send him. If he never finds it, I won't shed any tears. Matt Hodgkins, you ought to be ashamed. Your own dead cousin's boy, too. She Why? was not my cousin, and you know it. She was second cousin to my half-sister, and I never saw her once in my life. That don't give me any reason to force her son off on me to raise. Oh, you're the only kin the poor little thing's got. It seems to be mighty nice for Arthur to have a little brother to play with. I don't want any little brother, and if I did, I wouldn't want some old guy from the city. Well, I do hope you'll try and be a mite civil to him, if he ever does find his way out here. You say you're going to Matt Hodgkin's place, boy? Yes, sir. Does Matt know you're bringing a dog along? No, sir. I just picked him up at that gas station back there. Some tourist left him, likely. I guess so. Nobody wanted him, so I took him. You think Uncle Matt will mind? Well, I never knew Matt Hodgkin's to have anything on his farm that didn't produce more than its keep. It's funny. I didn't even know he had relatives in the city. You say he's an uncle of yours? Well, not exactly. Dad used to say he was sort of a 30-second cousin, 42 degrees removed. <laughs> How long you plan on staying? Forever, I guess. Forever? How come? I, I'd a little rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. Oh, excuse me. I had no right to pry into your personal business anyway. I didn't mean to be sassy. It's just that I haven't any other place to go. You see, my mom and dad were killed in an auto accident a few days ago. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, boy. I am always sticking my nose in where it doesn't belong. You'll find that out when you know me better. That's Matt's place we're coming to now. I owe you for the ride out of this. Hmm, what's this? I had it for lunch money and such, but I wasn't hungry. Uh, you better keep it. Don't tell your uncle you've got it either. It's liable to be the last spending money you'll see for quite a spell. Don't take the dog in with you either. Not till you know he's well. Bye and good luck. Better stay here until I fix things with Uncle Matt. Fish Shep. Now you stay right here, and I'll be right back. I'll find you a little snack. 
Well, I suppose we might as well go in and see what he's like. I don't have to see him. I can guess. I've got your room all fixed up. Nothing fancy, but it's clean and bright. Here's Arthur and Uncle Matt. Miss Danny. Yeah. Oh, I see. And Arthur. Hello. Whose initials are them? Yours? My father's. What do they stand for? Daniel Shaw Barker. Barker. Sounds more like a name for a dog. Wolf, 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 wolf. <laughs> Quite the Hodgkins. Let him alone, Gary. Can't he make a joke without getting jumped off? Drink your milk, Danny. You take his grip upstairs. Oh, why can't he take his own grip? Sure, I'd rather. Are you trying to make a flunky out of your son? I'm trying to take manners. Oh. Get along with you. After your vet, get into your overalls and come on down to the barn. We work on this farm. Yes, sir. Barker! Wolf, 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 wolf! Arthur! Stop that! Oh, don't pay him no mind. He's only teasing. Yes, my name. That's Gary. Do you think Uncle Matt would let me have a dog? We well, just raised the roof if you even mentioned it. Where you over all? I don't have any. Never mind. You can use our artist till we get you some. Thank you. Run along upstairs. What the heck is this? Pajamas. What are they for? Well, to sleep in, of course. Whoever heard of you sleeping in your pants? We take ours off when we go to bed around here. Where's your overhaul? Aunt Carrie said I could wear some of yours. Oh, she did, huh? Well, maybe I got something to say about that. Who's this, your old man and old woman? They're my father and mother. Huh, they're dead, ain't they? Yes. Barker. Wolf, 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 wolf. I wish you wouldn't do that, Arthur. Gonna do anything about it? No, I'd rather be friends. But if you won't let me, if I won't, what are you gonna do about it? What are you two boys doing up there? Oh, I was already trying to pick a fight with me. Yeah. Big dog biscuit for you. How do you like that? No. Good boy. Uncle Matt, mm -hmm. on a nice farm like this, don't you think it'd be a good idea to have a dog? No. Well, a dog could help around here. You know, the chickens and everything. We already got one barker on this farm. I know where I can get a good one. A dog eats as much as a man. But this is a thoroughbred. Thoroughbreds eat as much as mongrels. I can help pay for his food. What with? Oh, I've got some money. So, they give you money to help pay your board and you keep it, huh? Give it here. No, sir, this is mine. Honest it is. Where do you get money like that? <laughs> what difference does it make where he got as long as it's his? Well, what does he need with money as long as he's living on... Something in the chicken house. I don't 
see nothing. without you eating dog biscuits. Danny Parker is his name. He eats dog biscuits. Shamey Shane. Shut up. Dog biscuits. Excuse me. I'm not very hungry. You won't tell? Yeah, I promise. There was something in the Tim house last night. Got one of my best laying hands. Better bury it. Get a dog after me telling you not to, huh? No, sir. I already had him. Arthur, go get my gun. You bet. I'll have no chicken-killing dog on my farm. Uncle Matt, please don't shoot him. Chip didn't kill any chicken. It was some other animal. And Chip killed him. Don't make it worse by lying. <laughs> A likely story. Come here, you. Are you 
get up to your room and stay there. And you needn't expect any supper either. I'll teach you to disobey me. Look, Pa, I gave you a dollar not to tell you had a dog. Oh, he did, did he? Huh. That just about pays for the ham. to take some of this housework off my hands, John. Seems like he could do something to help Ernie keep. He does all he can, Alice. He's out there now mowing the lawn. Oh, thanks. He gets a pension check, too. We never see any of that, do we? I wouldn't take any of it if he offered it. Well, I would. Here, help me move this couch. Look, John, why don't we send him off to the old soldier's home where he belongs? Send Dad to the soldier's home? You don't mean that, Alice. Why not? He's a nuisance and you know it. All he does is smell up the house with his old pipe and talk about the Spanish-American War, El Cane, Morro Castle, Teddy Roosevelt, blah, blah, blah. I've heard it till I know it by heart. Yeah, I know. But the old soldier's home. That's what they have it for, isn't it? To keep old men like him out from under people's feet. Oh, Johnny... Johnny, I've got some mail for you. Uh, well, wait a minute, Johnny. I, I want to talk to you. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Johnny, you know, I've been thinking, and uh, I, I don't want you to feel funny about this, but, uh, well, I was I was just wondering if, if you'd mind too much if I went to live in the old soldier's home. The old soldier's home? Yeah. Oh, uh, not that not that you haven't done everything you could in your power to make me happy here, you and Ella, and, because you have, and I'm grateful. But, uh, 
way you know how it is, Johnny. Uh, your ways ain't my ways, and, uh, well, you, you get underfoot, sort of, you might say, and uh, reckon I'd be uh, more comfortable with men of my own age, men I fought with, with El Cane. Uh, of course, if, if you'd rather that I stayed. Well, well no, I, I wouldn't want to stand in your way, Dad. Uh, if you'd rather go. Then that's settled. Now, you tell Ella goodbye for me. Yes, and thank her. Thank her for everything. You don't mean you're leaving right now. Time to do things when you've made up your mind. Yeah. I I I'll be sending for my things in a few days. So long, son. <clears throat> Ella, I think Dad overheard every word you said. He's left for the old soldier's home. He has? Well, that certainly simplifies things, doesn't it? I don't know. That's right. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> some of the details about the uh, boy's adoption were a little too complicated to handle by mail, so I drove down here to talk to you about them personally. Well, can if you like, but it ain't necessary. <laughs> I'm afraid it is, Mr. Hodgkins. I say it ain't. Then he's gone. Gone? Gone where? No idea. What more don't care. Some great little beggar run away. Are you telling me he ran away, a little boy like that, and then you did nothing to get him back? No, why should I? I had no right to force him off on me in the first place. But I took him in and gave him a good home. And that costs money. If he don't want my help, I ain't gonna run around and try to force it on him. Well, apparently you feel taking him in was an act of charity. Well, what would you call him, a paying guest? Yes, I think I would. Hmm. You see, his father left an estate of over $100,000. What? Whoever adopted him was to become trustee. You're fooling. According to the will, $25,000 would be set aside to make a home for the boy. But, of course, as you say, uh, it's no concern of yours. So, uh, good day, Mr. Hodgkin. Uh, the heck, it ain't no concern of mine. I I'll go after him, Mr. Stanfield. I'll fetch him back, you poor little fella. I'm afraid it's too late for anything like that, Mr. Hodgkin. No, it ain't. I'll call out the sheriff. I'll offer a reward. After what's happened, I don't think the courts will let you have him anyway. <clears throat> well, the courts can't cheat me out of what's mine. I'll fight him. I'll lost to him. I'll... Bring a little brat back if I have to break his neck doing it. Gee, Shep, we gotta stay out of sight. And our food's about gone, too. Come on, boy. That's all there is. Well, here's your share. You better eat it. It'll be the last you'll see for quite a while. Well, if you won't eat it, I will. Good. Well, you insist.
on earth did you get this? Get it, son. My dog took it. Oh. He's pretty hungry, and so am I. Hungry? Well, why don't you go back home and get something to eat? We haven't any home. Oh. Gee. Well, <clears throat> you know, I think there's enough for the three of us here. Here, if we kind of take it easy, come on, sit down. You, uh... Are you heading any place particular? No, sir. Nowhere special. Yeah. You kind of, kind of like the idea of being a tramp? Well, gets pretty lonesome sometimes. Yeah, I found that out myself. Say, do you know something? There's a wonderful little place up the creek there where we could build a dandy camp for a while, as long as the weather holds out. You mean, Shep and me too? Sure, if you, if you could put up with an old codger like me. Well, gee, that'd be swell, wouldn't it? Oh, boy. Mind us being here? Oh, I don't think so. This is summer place, you know. Haven't opened up yet for the regular season. Like it better here than your Uncle Matt's place? I'll say I... My Uncle who? Uncle Matthew back there in Marion. How'd you know about us? I... Look at this, Danny. Uh, Are you going to take me back? Well, that depends. Was they mean to you? Yes, they were. No, that's not so. They weren't mean, exactly. Not enough to eat, maybe. Hmm? No. I had plenty to eat. And Aunt Terry fixed me up a swell little room of my own. She did? Well, that sounds kind of nice to me. Quite sure you don't think you ought to go back? No, sir. You can take me back if you want to. But I won't go back by myself. Well, why not? Good home, good food. What's wrong with that? They don't want me. does make a difference, don't it? I don't suppose there's anything in the world that makes a man feel so good as knowing that somebody wants him. Nothing makes him more miserable than knowing that he ain't wanted. No, Danny. Couldn't take you back if that's how it is. Gee, you're super! Ain't gonna be any too easy, you know. Boy and the dog knocking around alone. You mean you don't want us either? Surely you don't want to stick along with me. Gosh, yes. Who wouldn't? Well, I could name one or two that. Never mind that. All right. 
settle. You mean we're partners? The three of us. Summertime and vacation, but come fall, you've got to be in school, you know. And I ain't any way fixed to handle that. Well, can't we sort of forget that now, Mr. Latham? Like you said yesterday, when the time comes, something generally always turns up. <laughs> All right. We leave it at that. Hmm? Yeah, I guess you better take your swim now, Danny. You should stop fighting. We've yeah, got yeah. enough for breakfast anyway. Danny, I'll take the fish up the creek away and fry them. Owner wouldn't like us to mess up his property with a fire. You're not going to run away from me, are you? No, no, Danny. Wild well, horses couldn't make me do that. One thing that fellas like you and me always want to have in that pocket. Soap? Soap. Man can always sleep, food he can get somehow or another. But if you ain't got soap, you stay dirty. Why, I remember one day at El Cane, my top sergeant and me. You see, we were in a muck hole. Darned if a bomb didn't explode right in front of us and blow us, and we were just a sight. <laughs> Here's some more brush, Mr. Latham. Oh, thank you, Danny. You know, the Cubans showed me how to build these things, and when they finish the size, they throw mud on it, and when it dries, it's airtight. Are we going to do that too, Mr. Oh, Latham? Oh, no, sirree. I like plenty of fresh air. And, say, that reminds me. I'd better get to town and get, get some things. Our commissary is getting kind of low. Well, Shep and I will go in for you. No, they're looking for you. I'll tell you what. You bring in some more brush, and then and take, take Shep down and have a nice swim while I'm gone, eh? What's that for? Shep's in my chair. Eh? Hmm? Now you know you'll have to come back. Because you got to bring me my change. Don't you worry, son. I'll be back. Back before sundown. By golly, I believe they really do want me. Fifteen words. That'll be eighty-seven cents. Up about where that Barker boy is, do I get some of the reward? Where is he? How about the cut? Well, yes, I suppose so. If you don't ask too much. How'd you find out where the boy is? By the name Latham just sent a wire to a lawyer in Columbus. Says the boy's camping out with him somewhere. Is Latham still in the office? No, he's going to grocery. There he is now. Just a minute, mister. Hmm? You're a stranger around town, aren't you? Oh, I'm a stranger in lots of places. 
Why? Your name Latham? Why do you ask? Never mind that. Where are you from? Well, I've been in lots of places. Had quite a trip down in Cuba, yes. Fought there in the jungle with Teddy Roosevelt. An old General Shaft who was a personal friend of mine. All he... right, all right. But what I want to know is where is that Barker boy? <laughs> lots of folks would like to know that, I reckon. Well, where uh, is he? Why ask me? Because you know where he is. It's you that says so, not me. Man can't tell what he don't know. All right, I'll lock you up until you make up your mind. Well, what's the charge? Kidnapping? That's good enough. Yeah, go kind of hard with you if you're wrong. False arrest and all that sort of thing, you know. I can hold you in a vacancy charge. Oh, I don't think you can. And I'm eligible for the old soldier's home if I want to go there, <coughs> which I don't. Well, come with me. Now, look, and I'll hold you on a... This has gone far enough. Good gracious, don't you sheriffs ever use your head? If I knew where the boy was, wouldn't I bring him here and claim a reward? Wouldn't you? Well, yes, I suppose I would. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> now you stop acting like a darn gum sheriff. Get a car. Follow that fellow out of town and give him a lift. What for? He's camped out somewhere with that Barker boy, and I want to find out where. Anything you want in the village, darling? I have to go in and put through some long-distance calls. No, nothing I can think of, honey. I shan't be gone long. Goodbye. Bye, dear. Well, he's driving back to town. This will be a cinch. a good egg, he wouldn't care. I wish you'd go away so I can come out and dress. I'm getting cold. Well, come on out. Nobody's stopping you. I haven't got enough clothes on for in front of a girl. How did you know I'm a girl? Well, I can see, can I? Oh, for crying out loud. I hate girls. I do all I can to look like a boy. Wear their clothes and everything. 
And I never fool anybody. Oh, I think I like you better as a girl. Oh, you're just talking. Boys don't like girls. Do they? I don't like all girls, but... Why did you get dressed? I won't look. I'm just... Do you want a lift? <laughs> well, thanks, but I, I'm turning off at the Cherry Creek Road. Uh, well, get in. That's just the way I was going. Oh. It's my pillow. go get himself lost. Well, let's get the girl and get out of here. What, leave him here to call cops? He cares about a couple of hick coppers. Well, I do, and so does Lefty. Sit. Sit up, Shep. Speak. You know, this thing's got to work. It'll be curtains for all of us. You know, that Lefty will sing. Yeah, I should have taken care of him before they nabbed him, the rat. No. Yeah. Back away. Stop. Look to your left. Way over to your right. Right now, thought of the lady. <coughs> oh, Danny, he's wonderful. Oh, that's nothing. Chef's practically human. Look, you got a handkerchief? Now, I'll let Chef smell it, and you run and hide. I'll count to 200 slow, and Chef will find you. Oh, he couldn't. I'll show you. Smell it, Chip. Smell it. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come here. Lie down. Lie down. No fair peeking. Hey, Shorty. This is it. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. Eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-seven. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, two hundred. Here we come, ready or not. Take her. You go ahead and get the car started. All right. Daddy! Listen, you're... 
You can't treat her like that. Well, all right, you ask for it. Now you come along too. Come on. Stopping at the Herricks? Don't stop anywhere. Just keep moving. Uh, oh, thank the sheriff kindly for the ride. The sheriff? How'd you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm, sorry I couldn't lead you to Danny Barker, but... Hey, what's that? Damn it! So you don't know anything about the Barker boy, huh? Now somebody else will get the reward. There was no one out for Danny, but they've got a girl. A girl? How do you know? I left Danny alone at the camp. The girl? The Harry girl. Hey, she came in this afternoon. You go back for help, and I'll do what I can for Miss Ellen. I'll do it. Hey, did you get the license number? Too far away. Couldn't see a darn thing. Sure can follow along. Lorna with you, Lois. No, she's playing with the little boy down at the other end of the pond. Oh, Lorna. Lorna, can you hear me? What is it, Jim? It's Lefty Monahan. Lefty Monahan? Oh, Jim, he wouldn't... I'm afraid he has. I've got to send some wires. Hold up that indictment for a few days if we can until I can get some action.
Want me to with them just now? The least we can do is to follow them. Come on. Take it easy, kids. You won't be here very long. I sure wish my dog Chip was here. Yeah, me too. I got a couple of scores to settle with him. Hadn't we better tie their feet? Can if you want to, but uh, they're not going anywhere. Did you bring any chow? Yeah, it's in the rear. Hey, I hear cars. May not a peep out of either one of you, understand? Can I have a drink? Ah, you're too young to drink. What's the next play? Well, as soon as it gets dark, you go in town and contact the boss. Well, why me? Well, uh, at least you look presentable. I don't, thanks for that mutt. When you come back, we'll know whether we have to sit here on these kids or dust off? Oh, I get it. Okay. Well, they couldn't have gone any farther. And we sure didn't pass them anywhere. I've been thinking that, uh, you know, uh, they could have doubled back on the highway while we were organizing this manhunt. Yeah, they might have done that. Well, anyway, we've done all we can tonight. Turn around, men. We're going back. That's right, Chef. Stay with him, boy. Stay with him. Did you get in touch with the old man? Yes, but I didn't need to. Papers have the story all over the front page. Well, good or bad? Bad. D.A. did all he could to stop it, but he was too late. Grand jury had already returned the indictment. Lefty's trial gets set tomorrow. Well, I'll say that's bad. the kids rolling around the hay. Lorna, hey, Lorna. I think I hear Shep outside. Yeah, it was the kids. I heard him again. Come on in, Shep. Come on, old boy. You know, if Lefty goes to trial, we're going to be hotter than a depot stove. Yeah, you're not kidding. Hey, Shep. What do the old man have to say about the kids? Well, what do you think? Get it. Well, I don't like it. Do you have to?
Where's the sheriff? In the car back of me. What's holding us up? Me. Fine. You're under arrest. Oh, yes, I'm under arrest, all right, but I've got a lead on the kids. How come? The car just passed me. How do you know it was? Shep recognized it and took after it. How'd he know it? Well, he had a fight with him. Might have went by with the lights out. I didn't see anybody pass us. They might have gone down that side road. Yeah, there's an old barn at the end of it. Come on, men. I think we've got something. I'll untie your hands and we can both untie our feet. Why don't we lamb out of here? By the time they find those kids, we can be out on the coast. Look, it's bad enough to have the law on us without having the old man looking to cool us off. Yeah. Do you think you can stand? No. Maybe not. Hey, have you got a drink? Yeah, in the glove compartment. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, that's not any kids in any hay. That's that dog. Come on, Chef. Get away. Come on. There's the old barn. There they go. They're running away from me. You were a goner, boy. And I suppose you expect to get the reward for taking him back to Mad Hodgkins. You know something, Sheriff? I'm going to do everything in my power to see that he never does get back to Matt Hodgkins. All right, men. Get him back to the car. to you all, gentlemen, that this is not a legally constituted court, nor am I acting in my official capacity as judge. Then what the heck are we here for? We are assembled as a friendly group to discuss the facts in the matter of Danny Barker's adoption and to advise you professionally, but unofficially, as to your rights, and... I know my rights. That boy ran away from my home. He was sent to me for adoption, and I've said so in the will. The will made no mention of Mr. Hodgkins, Your Honor. It was merely a, an oral suggestion made by the boy's mother. And to be conditioned on the fact One that... One moment, Stanfield. 
As a district attorney of considerable experience, I ought to set you out on procedure. Uh, later, Jim. The important thing at the moment is what I have to say. You're wrong, all of you. I, I'm the only one in this room with anything important to say. What right have you got to say anything? You're the one who stole my boy. Well, that ain't exactly true. First place, he ain't your boy and never could be. In the second place, I didn't steal him, Judge. We, uh, well, we just sort of stole each other. The three of us. The three of you? Yep. You see, there was Shep. Nobody wanted him until Danny came along. Then there was Danny. Feels like nobody wanted him after his folks died. Up until I came along. And then... <clears throat> well, then, then there was me. Well, nobody wanted me for a good many years. Until Danny and Shep found me. So we, uh, well, we, we just uh, sort of stole each other, you might say. Went away for a while together, where we could enjoy uh, just being wanted. And you'd have made a tramp out of him. No, no, I wouldn't. I wired Mr. Stanfield that I'd have the boy back in time for school. That's right, Your Honor. You see, you men are educated. You can talk a lot about right. The law's rights and Hodgkin's rights. But there's only one person in this room whose rights amount to a darn, and that's little Danny. It's every boy's right to be wanted. Hodgkin's didn't want him. That's why he ran away. He told me so himself. And Danny wouldn't lie to me, would you, Danny? No, sir, not for anything. You know, Judge, in a country the size of ours, it seems that, well, there must be somebody besides Shep and me that would want a little, a little boy like him. I... <clears throat> guess that's all I've got to say, Judge. Well, I want him, and my dad and mom do, too. Don't we, Daddy? You're doggone tootin'. Well, you ain't gonna get him. This ain't a court of justice. I know my rights and I'll fight for them through. I, I've listened to enough of your bucolic outbursts, Mr. Hutkins. Yes, you are right. This is not a court of law. If it were, I would take great pleasure in banning you for contempt. I can't stop you from taking the boy home with you. But if you do, it will cost you the $500 reward. If you try to force adoption through the courts, it will break you. And from what I have heard here this morning, in the end, you will lose your case. Now, you understand this is not an official decision, only the opinion of a man who has been a judge for 25 years. All right. If that's the kind of justice a man gets, guess what, he ain't rich. All right. As a matter of fact, I don't want the boy, I never did. <laughs> Where's Mr. Latham? He probably went to the old soldier's home. Well, don't let him get away, Danny. Come on, Jeff! Mr. Latham, Mr. Latham, come back. We want 
you. Daddy. 